Good morning, I'm Kieran Breen from Queen's Actuary Consultancy, or Quacks for short, and we are here today to present to you our evaluation of the XYZ pension scheme, which was valued as of the 5th of April 2010. The purpose of this valuation was to calculate the level of asset funding, therefore disclosing the consultancy's estimate of the solvency position of the scheme. Um, we have used SuperVal software to value the scheme, and we'll be presenting you with some of the results that we achieved today. More detail on these results can be found in the valuation report which you also compiled. We also used both Excel and manual checks to ensure the highest standard and accuracy was achieved in our results. We will present to you our estimate of the solvency position and give advice on a suitable contribution policy for the future. Furthermore, we conducted a sensitivity analysis to show the effect of changing conditions on the valuation figure that was achieved. We also have come up with some cost saving changes which will reduce the future contributions required to balance the scheme, and we will present these to you later. I'll now pass you on to Emer, who will talk you through our assumptions and why we have selected them. As Kieran mentioned, SuperVal software um, was used to carry out the valuation of the scheme. It required us to decide on a series of assumptions on which we would base our calculations on. These assumptions were upheld constantly throughout the valuation to ensure that our valuation was as accurate and reliable as possible. After researching recent data, we agreed on the following series of demographic and financial ass assumptions. Um, first, let's deal with financial assumptions. We set interest pre-retirement at 6% um, because after doing our research, um, we obtained from the long-term interest rates used by the Bank of England over the last decade, we obtained an average figure of 6%. Um, for the interest post-retirement, we um, applied an adjustment of minus 0.5% to arrive at the figure of 5.5% um, since assets will be invested in less risky areas to provide a more reliable return, and hence a lower return should be expected. Um, we set inflation um, at a rate of 3%. Um, after analysing um, RPI data and salary growth um, a figure of 4% for the valuation um, taking into consideration the fact that it is generally set minimally higher than our inflation rate due to the connection between these two variables. Now let's deal with our demographic assumptions. Um, for mortality pre-retirement for non-pensioners and mortality post-retirement non-pensioners we used PMA92 base tables with an adjustment of minus 3 for non-pensioners. And for the mortality post-retirement, we used, again, PMA92 base tables with a slightly smaller adjustment of minus 1. These adjustments were used um, to, to convey the improvement in life expectancy over the past two decades due to improvements in healthcare in society. Um, and... Um, the slightly smaller adjustment of minus one was used um, for the pensioners. Um, it is still prudent, um, but the adjustment is smaller than those for active and deferred since the life expectancy has not changed as much for pensioners. And over the years, mortality rates have fallen. However, life expectancy has increased due to the improvements in healthcare. Um, so we set the proportion married um, at 80% for males and 70% for females as the average age of all members is 55 and marriage proportions are quite high for people of this age. And lastly, we have the national retirement age at 65 because um, this is the current, the current retirement age in the UK today. And I will now pass you over to Olivia who will um, discuss the data summary, asset summary and preliminary results. Okay, so before valuing the scheme, we compiled a data summary of all the members. Um, the scheme is made up of 968 members in total, and this is then divided into actives, deferreds, and pensioners. Um, the deferreds make up the largest proportion, um, with 38% of the members, followed by actives and then pensioners. Um, each member also falls into one of five categories, and um, according to which category they're in, this will determine their pension increases. Um, as you can see on the table here, um, it's split into pre-97 pension and post-97 pensions and um, it varies between 0% increases, RPI which is 3% increases and 4%. Um, and just on the next slide here it shows um, within the actives, deferreds and pensioners um, the distribution of each category. Um, in all three, category 2 
has the highest amount of members um, and the actives it concludes 45%, the deferred 38% and in the pensioners 24% and also these graphs just show the distribution of males and females within each category um, and just using all this data we were then able to get our preliminary results from SuperVal software, um, which gave out pension liability to the actives of almost 43 million, to the deferreds, um, just over 8 million there, and for the pensioners, it's almost 48 million. And this um, adds up to total pension scheme liabilities of 99 million 76,964 pounds. Um, and just on the other side, you can see that the uh, the assets at this time um, are valued at £75 million, pounds, which creates a deficit of £24,076,960. Pounds. And um, from this, we've calculated the current funding level. And as you can see, it's only just at 75.7%. Um, this will need to be made up to 100%. And over the next 10 years, um, the trustee must make additional annual contributions of um, three million eighty six thousand one hundred and twenty one pounds each year, and this was calculated using an annual unit advance for a term of ten years, and that was assuming the interest rate was at six percent. Um, there are other ways of cost savings um, to reduce the deficit, but they'll be detailed later in the report. Um, this here was the asset summary um, of the scheme at the moment. Um, as I said, it was the total market value is £75 million, and these are wholly invested in equities currently. However, it's recommended to have a more diverse portfolio um, as it will give a steadier, safer performance. Um, and we've just give, provided a suggested allocation of assets, which still allows 50% for equities, but also has 25% UK GILF, 25% corporate bonds, um, although equities do provide quite a high return, they're also a lot riskier, especially in the current financial climate, as the equity market is quite volatile, um, and that could change the market value of the pension scheme assets. Um, so it's just a bit more diverse, and um, the gil UK gilts are risk-free, and they're backed by the government, um, so they're a lot more reliable, and although they give a lower yield, they give a lot more steady performance. Corporate bond Corporate bonds are riskier, but they do give a fixed interest payment each term and are therefore more reliable. So therefore, um, in the long term, you'll just get a steadier, safer performance. Um, I'll now pass you on to, to Tessa with the sensitivity analysis of the data. Uh, okay, so because the value of the pension scheme liabilities are subject to the assumptions made and are sensitive to these changes, a, sensitiv a sensitivity analysis was conducted on the scheme liabilities to test the effects of these small changes in the assumptions. Three of these changes are illustrated in the following graph. So the first graph shows the analysis of the interest rate. As you can see, a 1% change in either way of the interest rate we chose at 6% shows decreases, particularly in the actives and deferreds. From 5%, you can see that this is the percentage that creates the highest value of liability. This is because there is an increase in the, the amount of deferred liabilities and this increase is approximately 20% higher than that at 6%. Also the percentage increase of the actives at 5% is about 20% 20, 20 as well. However, if you were to go from 6% to 7%, there is a dramatic decrease in the liabilities. There is a decrease again of about 20% in deferreds and actives and a small decrease of about 8% in the pensioners. This scheme is quite vulnerable to the changes in the interest rate changes. Um, if we're going the second sensitivity analysis we carried out was in the normal retirement age so if a scheme was to change the normal retirement age from 65 years to 70, the liabilities of the active and deferred members are approximately reduced by 25%. You can see that from the graph, um, so overall you can see that there's a decrease in the liabilities 
Uh, this decrease has led the UK government to strongly consider raising the normal retirement age to 70, as this would be an effective method of reducing the liabilities of the scheme. The final sensitivity anal analysis we carried out was an interest rate. This was the the this this method was sh created the smallest decrease in liabilities. Um, there was no change in the pensioner um, value. However, there was small decreases in the deferred and active proportions. Fifteen percent decrease in the deferred and only 1% decrease in the active. At present, some firms are beginning to revalue their liabilities using the CPI system instead of the RPI, as this is considered an efficient method to reduce their liabilities. Now I will pass you on to Shirley to discuss the cost-saving method. Okay, so as Olivia stated, the scheme has a deficit of £24,076,960. In order to reduce this deficit, there are various ways of reducing the liabilities of the scheme. One possible cost saving method is to change the accrual rate from 60th to 80th. This change will affect the future liabilities of the active members. As you can see from the graph, the liability is reduced from over £126 million to approximately £98 million. This is a reduction of 22.4%. The deferred members and pensioners are not affected. At the moment, a lot of firms, including Queen's University, are trying to introduce this method of cost saving. However, it is proven to be very unpopular with scheme members and many employees are protesting and even striking. Another cost saving method would be to introduce 0% pension increases. Again, only the future service liabilities of the active members are affected. The liabilities will be reduced from over 126 million to approximately 115 million, as you can see from the graph. This cost saving method will reduce the liabilities by almost 9%. The downfall of this change, however, is that pensioners will receive a reduced pension in the future. The members of the scheme will have many objections to this. The scheme changed to a career average revalue scheme, which uses an average salary rather than final salary. The future liabilities of the active members will be reduced. As you can see from the graph, the liabilities decreased by over 10 million. This is a reduction of approximately 8%. However, because pensions are valued based on an average salary rather than a higher final salary, again, members will have objections to this they will receive a reduced pension. So I will now hand you back over to Karen. Okay, so in summary then, we arrived at an XYZ pension scheme valuation of £99,076,964 and uh, the current value of the scheme's asset is at £75 million. We therefore arrived at a scheme deficit figure of £24,076,964 we calculated then that the annual contributions required to bring the scheme up to 100% cover would be £3,086,121 and these would be annual contributions over the next decade, the next 10 years. Um, also having looked at the asset distribution, we have uh, suggested that a redistribution of the assets is necessary from 100% equities to down to about 50% equities and spreading the rest of the assets in the different areas. The to achieve a better distribution. Then we carried out the sensitivity analysis on the valuation uh, and found that the scheme is particularly uh, vulnerable to changes in the interest rates. Uh, we then carried out our three cost saving methods which te we tested and uh, we have decided or we would suggest using an accrual rate uh, adjustment from uh, 60th down to 80th uh, even though this would probably be unpopular with um, scheme holders. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, we are happy to answer any questions that you may have.